Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. And right now, it's time to look at our hot topic. It says, Zamfara to spend 3 billion naira on consultancy services for government projects. And joining me to um, just have a conversation about this is Shegun Shokwetan. He's the chairman, accountability, candor, and transparency. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. For well, Transparency Network, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yes. Thanks for having me. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Yes. Thank you for coming in. Um, all right. So we're talking about, <laughs> this is a lot of money. We're talking about 3 billion naira on consultancy fees for government projects. And um, some other, when I did my research, some other projects were 950 million to build the Emirates Palaces. 350 million um, for mosques and cemeteries. And we were just seeing about 426 billion that was signed into law. It was the appropriation bill that was signed into law by the gov governor in December 2023. Um, but please, I, want just, I just want you to walk us through all of this because there's a lot of numbers. And if we're looking at, you know, 3 billion naira just for the consultancy fees, that's a lot of money, but just walk us through it. Well, um, it's, um, I think it's excellent that um, you guys have decided to bring this, to take this as, as um, a major story or a major issue to look into uh, mm. this morning. And I think, and I wish that uh, more, more media houses and um, Nigerians in general would do a bit more of this, you know. Uh, we all tend to focus our attention on the federal government yeah. and uh, forget the subnationals. You know, um, this, we, we've got the federal government as as um, as um, an administrative um, uh, uh, body, or, or uh, yeah, let me just say, administrative body that runs the affairs of the country at the national level, and then you've got thirty six others. Mm. 36 others that 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 also have a very direct in fact arguably a more direct impact on the life of the average nigerian um spread across the entire country and um you know this this these guys fly below the radar all the time um they they do whatever they want to do and they rarely get any kind of scrutiny from the public um except you know in exceptional cases uh, so maybe Lagos state for example because it's you know it is what it is uh, the 50 to 60 percent of the commercial activity in Nigeria is based in Lagos so you tend to get a lot of focus in Lagos Port Harcourt um, you know River State again because a lot of our oil resources are you know tied to the activities in that state you know and a couple of other places maybe can occasionally again because of its commercial importance to Nigeria but Look at the other. That's I just listed three out of yeah. thirty-six, and the other thirty plus. You know, um, these governors get away with blue murder, <laughs> and nobody, nobody pays any attention to them. So I, I think kudos to your team for for bringing Zamfara State, in particular, you know, uh, to to the public um, uh, focus. Um, having said this, um, so the the the, the 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 figures that we have. Uh, for this uh, conversation are uh, basically figures from the budget of Zamfara State for, for this year, for 2024. Um, it's, it's a total budget of 426 billion naira. Um, mm. That's roughly just shy of half a trillion naira. Um, so it might sound small if you compare that to the federal government budget, but um, half a trillion naira is not, is not chicken change. It's, it's a lot of money still. Um, and then what we're looking at is, you know, some components of, of that budget and how, how um, important it is, you know, for some of the items that have been placed on that budget. Why are they there? You know, why, why for example, like you said, will the, will the government that is running a budget of just shy of a trillion naira be spending uh, almost half a billion naira on consultancy alone, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, this is, this is, it's, um, in, in fact, what am I, it's almost a trillion, you know, on consultancy. I mean, so it's this, three, this three, is, three, um, billion, three billion, three billion on, on consultancy, three billion. yeah. Three billion on consultancy for government projects. Um, 
I, I, I am a consultant <laughs> um, in my day job. Mm. <laughs> so when I see that figure, um, I, I can relate to a certain extent. That is definitely degree. payday for somebody. It's absolutely payday for somebody. So the question is, what exactly will those people, be you know, doing. be doing mm. for the government? When you say consultancy, uh, the, the sad thing that uh, some of us who play in that field uh, suffer is that people use that terminology very loosely and very widely, mm. and it's used to cover pretty much anything and everything. Um, so, so it would be good to know exactly what these people are consulting, what specific expertise yeah. are they providing that justifies three billion naira. You know, um, um, of course, we have to understand that this is over a one-year period. So, even mm -hmm. if you split that three billion, um, you say, for example, to a, on a monthly basis, uh, you are still talking of about um, uh, divided by ten is three hundred million. So you are still talking about 250, 280 million naira every month to pay consultants. That's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, so um, I think the people of Zamfara State should be asking questions of their governor to find out why, wh what exactly are we paying for? What are these consulting services? What, what, what specific expertise do these guys provide that the staff of the civil service in that state cannot provide? Um, why are we spending a trillion, a billionaire, pardon me, a billionaire to build palaces for emirs? Are we just appointing new emirs? Are we creating new emirates? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I mean, is it that these emirs did not have palaces before? It will be one thing to say you want to renovate, you know, the palaces of emirs, um, to say you want to build, even if it's a renovation, you know, 950 million naira. Uh, um, just to spend on palaces of um, traditional rulers who, you know, to be honest, have very little role to play in the governance uh, process in, in, the, in modern day Nigeria. You know, that, that's, that's a lot of money. And then 350 million to build religious, religious centers, mosques, um, cemeteries. Uh, these figures are just um, large. Uh, and I think that what we perhaps should be doing is to look into the details you know, just be, be a bit more uh, thorough, as they say, the devil is in the details. Mm -hmm. um, so how many how many cemeteries, for example, and how many mosques are we talking about? You know, um, will that 350 uh, million um, finance? So if it's 10, for example, then you'd be saying 35 million naira for each mosque and cemetery. Um, um, I, I think that, again, it would come down to, you know, the people of Zamfara State, do they think this is this is appropriate spending of their resources? Um, are in there um, more important um, things that the government can spend money on that would have a direct impact on the on the on the on the well-being of the people of Zamfara State? So there is there are so many questions to unpack. You know, from mm. from from looking at this budget. Okay, so looking at the budget, I mean, it's it's, it's interesting to know that the budget is a, has an estimate of 118 billion naira allocated for recurrent expenditure, um, which is about 27 percent of the sum of 308 billion, which is about 35 um, percent, which was allocated for capital expenditure. So when I'm looking at the numbers, I'm wondering, 118 billion, you know, for recurrent expenditure then 950 million for the the construction of for the traditional rulers it's it's a lot of numbers and which brings me to my next question we're talking about zamfara state this is a state whereby the residents are still being attacked kidnapped killed sometimes shouldn't there be you know <laughs> you know them moving the phones to talk about security of the state than actually building palaces for the emirs that is to the tune of of about 905 or 950 um yeah 950 million naira because shouldn't shouldn't they be thinking of of how to secure the lives and properties of the people of zamfara i mean look it's it's um it, it's it's all in the air and it's a matter of prioritization um um, like you say, you know, we, we all know the, the issues that Zamfara State in particular over the years, in the last 10 years, have suffered, you know, with the issue of banditry. It can even be argued that you know, what the entire country is suffering today from banditry started from there. 
um, we remember all the, the, the controversy surrounding the then governor of Zamfara State having meetings with these bandits, um, talking about them handing over their, their arms and ammunition um, in exchange for some sort of um, clemency or amnesty programs, you know, and all of that. You know, this, this trended heavily uh, at a point in this country. Um, so to, to find that we've come down to a point a few years later where, well, the governor doesn't seem to think that this is now a priority. And in fact, if you look at that budget, you actually find that uh, there is a provision for purchase of um, Hilux vehicles, Yes, um, 15 brand new. cash gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15 brand new Hilux vehicles, cash gifts, to leaders of different repentant gangs of bandits mm. um, uh, by the past governor, mm. who is the current minister of defense. <laughs> you know, um, uh, you, you really begin to wonder what exactly is going on in this state. So um, I, I think uh, that there may be um, serious misplacement of priorities as far as as far as um, this budget is concerned, I think that we're not focusing our energies on the thing that matters the most to the life of the ordinary Zamfara um, citizen. Mm. What are the things that we should be thinking about? One, um, security, like you said. What are the things that can, we can spend money on to better secure the lives of the people of Zamfara State? Um, are there the single point solutions? Um, for the state in terms of security that, you know, can be funded from the budget or perhaps should we be talking about some sort of collaboration uh, between Zamfara State, neighboring states and the federal government and then what, what quantum of funding would that require of Zamfara State? You know, I think some, some sort of coherent uh, thought in that regard would have been good to see um, in this document. Let's not forget that budget documents um, are typically policy statements. They, they, they point to the, the mind, the thinking of the people that are presenting the budgets. What are their plans, you know, for that period that the budget covers and all of that. So um, this budget doesn't seem to be focusing attention on this very obviously critical problem that the, that the, that the state still faces. Um, another point to look at is, the, you know, the, the capital um, expenditure to recurrent expenditure percentage is proportion of the budget. And on the face of it, you see um, the sum of $308 billion, uh, being spent for capital expenditure, you know, 75% of the budget and only 27% going to recurrent. And one might be tempted to think, wow, this is fantastic uh, because this is what we always call for. But one of the things that I that I do realize is that if you look at the subnational budgets uh, compared to the national to the federal uh, gov uh, government budget, you find that the skew, the recurrent capital proportion skew, is reversed for most states. Most states budget more for capital expenditure and less for recurrent. And um, people have argued that this is really because the capital budgets are the easiest. Um, sources of, um, um, how would I put it now? Uh, to the, that's where you can put the teal for the money to become more readily accessible. Mm. It's easier to to award a contract of 20 billion naira, knowing that 10 billion out of that 20 billion will be used to dispense, um, you know, shared uh, uh, accordingly among stakeholders. Um, so even that 75 to 75 to 25 percent uh, skew in favor of capital expenditure is not something I would celebrate without knowing the details of those projects. So, I mean, we've already highlighted some of the items in that capital expenditure, and yeah. we're talking about mosques, you know, we're talking about cemeteries. Yeah. Um, is it that cemeteries didn't exist before? Granted that the, the state might be growing, and you could argue that, you, you know, you need more resources to manage the state better. So, yeah, maybe, maybe they need more cemeteries, but... I think scrutiny, scrutiny, scrutiny must be the watchword in this case. We need to be sure that all of these figures that are being thrown around in this budget, and it's not just for Zamfara State, for other states, um, yeah. actually are going to be, you know, deployed for the purposes that um, have been stated on paper. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, I am big on transparency. I'm big on giving a report. If you're asking for 
um, funds, you know, you should use them for what what you ask them for. Like you should be deployed to the right um, channels, right? So I'm big on transparency. Do we have like agencies? I know you work for um, you work for one, but do we have like agencies that actually you know just help to put this? politicians on their toes that, you know, if you're asking for such money, such amount of money, we need to see what exactly you're using it for. And not just even writing that we needed to, you know, have, um, build um, palaces and we need to build mosques and all of that. Is there a need for those palaces? Is there a need for those mosques? Is there a need for all the things that you've written on paper? And you know, they're just people who are there to ensure that there's some level of accountability and transparency. I mean, uh, like you like you said, I, I head um, the civil society organization uh, that is specifically focused, you know, on this issue of accountability and transparency in public in our public life yeah. as um, as a country. And we do our bit. Um, we've reached out to the federal government on several occasions, asking for details of projects um, um, to be made pro uh, available to us so we can scrutinize them and, and raise alarm if there's any need to do so, um, highlight those issues to the public if there's any need to do so. Um, you know, on occasion we do get uh, feedback from, from government, uh, but most times they don't cooperate. Even when you get the feedback, you find that what they do is they play around the issue or they refer you to one document or they refer you to some public um, press release that they've done in the past and all of that, they never really quite subject themselves or make themselves open to the scrutiny that is required. However, there are a lot of other civil society organizations as well who have put um, mechanisms in place to help citizens track um, um, public expenditure, public um, accountability issues and all of that. And I think we as, as a people must also seek out, you know, these platforms and these this programs that organizations like ours have put out there um, to make sure that we are supportive of their actions and that the government does not um, uh, see us, see the civil society organizations as a problem, but see us as representatives of the people, because the people in themselves are showing interest in, in the actions that, that we're taking. But absolutely, we, we need more. We need more um, civil society presence. We need more civil society organizations to, especially at the state level, to, to, to beam the searchlight on the activities of the state government and um, ensure that they just simply don't carry on as if this money is at the personal property. What we have at the state level is that, you know, I like to say a lot that um, our state governors are basically empire emperors who mm -hmm. are running the empires as they deem fit. Um, they really give account for, for the things that they do. In this budget, for example, you will not see an item called security votes, but it's there. Um, you know, this is a famous uh, problem, you know, that Nigerians are aware of now. Every state governor is entitled to, constitutionally entitled to something they call the security vote. Um, they can vote any amount that they want to that item, and they are not required. In fact, they are required by law not to account for it, uh, oh, you know, wow. because they, they claim that it's a security vote and they cannot divulge what the money is spent for. So what tends to happen is that this becomes the slush fund for government and uh, for governors. They basically take this money and just use it for whatever they want to use it for, and they call the security votes, and that they, that's the end of the matter. So a lot of issues like this exist that we, we have a lot of work to do as a country mm. to fix this issue. Now, let me, let me say that we must remember that when we talk about the Federal Republic of Nigeria and we look at the budget and we look at fiscal issues and, you know, um, expenditure issues, the federal government represents a smaller proportion of the total revenues that come into the country. In terms of how that, those monies are spent, the federal government represents only about uh, 35 or 40 percent. 60 percent goes to the state government and the local government. And the local governments, we all know, um, state governments manage their resources on their behalf. So 60 percent is actually managed. 60 percent of our expenditure as a country, of our revenues as a country, mm. are in the hands of the governors. So we all focus our attention on that 40%. Yes, it's a one single entity, but the 60% spread across the 36 states is a lot of money as well. And we, we need to put in a lot more work to, 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 to ensure that this uh, gentleman, you know, in the 36 government houses account for, for how, what they do with these resources. They are the resources of Nigerian people, not their personal property. Yeah. I mean, um, like, 
well, we don't really have a lot of time, but I really hope that there's some level of accountability. And I was even going to ask, what's the conversion rate like? So for the time that the CSOs um, come out and talk about this, is, is there anything being done? Is there, um, do, we, do we have to, you know, go to court? So is there any, any suit that needs to be filed? Um, I wanted to know what the conversion rate has been so far. So for instance, with Zamfara, if people are coming out and saying, you know, these numbers don't make sense, does the government, you know, go back and say, okay, you know what, we're going to cut down on this or not? And I think maybe you should just help me answer that quickly before we wrap it up. Occasionally, when there is um, enough of um, energy, when there is enough of a groundswell of attention to specific issues, you have governments reverse their position. You have mm. governments, you know, look back and take remedial action. But it's occasional and it rarely happens. Even when CSOs like ours go to court and get actual court judgments on specific issues, you know, concerning governance, you know, they're just ignored. We run a country that is run on a culture of impunity, where there is no consequence for bad behavior, where people disobey court orders when they please and nothing happens thereafter. You know, so invariably you find that we put in our efforts and we do the bit we can, but the politicians ignore you uh, most of the time, <laughs> uh, knowing fully well that nothing will happen. So yes, we do get some conversion, but it is precious little, there is a whole lot more that needs to be done. But I think that what could change that is for the people, the citizens of the country themselves, the citizens of the states, to be more um, um, deliberate in paying attention, to show interest in the issues that CSOs are pushing for them. Um, uh, Serap is one very famous CSO that sues. Yeah. If the federal government sneezes, they will sue them. <laughs> for sneezing. And they do they do get a lot of judgments. But if you just look at you know the, the history behind those judgments, you find that majority of those judgments are ignored. Majority of them are not obeyed and nothing happens. So we as a people, we as citizens of this country need to get to the point where we are insisting that the government must be accountable when court orders are given they should they must be obeyed you know social media is very powerful right yes. so maybe i'll just round up by saying that social media is one place where i've seen that when there is enough of um of um uh, uni, 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 unity mm -hmm. yes of a buzz behind a specific issue we the people always prevail and i can give example upon example upon example you know um where people have trended a particular hashtag and the government had to respond. So I think Nigerians will need to, you know, use, you know, the instrument of social media a bit more uh, to get our public officials to do the bidding of the people rather than just um, do whatever pleases them uh, mm -hmm. for time. All right. Well, that's a very good way to leave it. Um, I want to say thank you so much for coming in and sharing your valuable contributions. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with Shegun Shokuto, and we've just been talking about the fact that Zamfara has three billion naira in consultancy fees for certain projects that um, they're going to be having, and some of these projects are about nine hundred and fifty um, billion naira for nine hundred and fifty million naira for. Um, um, we're looking at palaces for the army as well. So looking at cemeteries and um, yeah, church mosque as well. So. Anyways, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.